This is the outdoor unit PCB of a GRI air conditioner. What's happening is that when power is supplied to the indoor unit, the display on the indoor unit shows an E6 error. I informed the customer to check the wiring and electrical connections, and if everything is fine, then the problem might be in the outdoor unit's PCB. Here, as you can see, there is a bridge rectifier, which is usually installed for the SMPS. These points here are soldered together. If I show you from the other side, you can see that there's an over-temperature connector installed here. A thermostat is placed on the compressor, and if the compressor overheats for any reason, the thermostat disconnects. Now, since this PCB is not powering on at all, we shouldn't provide direct electricity to it. What we will do is first test the high side of the circuit, because most of the time when there's an issue, if the problem lies in the high side, the PCB becomes completely dead. So for this, we'll test everything on the high side, starting from the filter to the IPM. Let's test the IPM. I'll place the positive probe on the positive point of the IPM and the negative probe on the negative point. You can see that it shows some voltage drop, which then disappears. This means there's a chance that the IPM might still be working. Now, moving to the next point, which is the WVU, we'll check it to ensure there is no short circuit. After that, I'll reverse the polarity of the probes, meaning the positive probe will go to the negative point and the negative probe to the positive point. You can see here that it shows some voltage drop, about 0.380. This voltage drop seems a little low, which means the IPM could either be faulty or still functional. There are both possibilities here. Next, I'll move the negative probe to the U point, where we see a voltage drop of 0.433. I'll also check the V point, and we get the same reading. The same result shows up on the W point as well, indicating that the IPM might be okay. Now moving on to testing the diode. Both outer points of the diode are anodes and are joined together. I'll show you with the meter that both points show zero, meaning these two are shorted together, which indicates that they are fine. The center point of the diode is the cathode. I'll place the black probe on it and the red probe on either side. And as you can see, it shows a voltage drop of 0.381, which means the diode is likely in good condition. It's completely fine. Next, I will check the IGBT to see if there's any issue with it. I'll place any probe on any point. As you can see, it's showing a voltage drop of 0.024, which means these two points are shorted together. Now placing the probe in the center, it's still showing zero, which confirms that this IGBT is short-circuited, and there's no chance it's working. However, sometimes the bridge rectifier connected to the IGBT could also be short-circuited, and if that happens, it increases the chances of the IGBT being short as well. But first, let's check it. On this side, we have the negative side, and on the other side is the positive side. We will place the positive probe on the positive point and the negative probe on the negative point. There shouldn't be any voltage drop here, which means it's fine. Now I'll reverse the polarity so the negative probe goes to the positive point and the positive probe goes to the negative point. Let's check it again. You can see that it's showing a voltage drop of 0.876. Next, I'll check the other point, which shows 0.480, and the next one is 0.484. So we found the problem the IGBT is short-circuited. Before replacing the IGBT, I'll also check the bridge rectifier since it's connected to the SMPS. If it's causing issues, the problem might persist. Now I'll switch the multimeter to diode mode and the procedure will remain the same. As you can see, these two points are for the electricity. One side is positive and the other is negative. We'll place the positive probe on the positive side and the negative probe on the negative side. Now I'll reverse the polarity and you can see that we're getting a voltage drop of 0.524. By continuing to change the polarity, we can confirm that the bridge rectifier is in perfect condition. In addition to that, you can see that the capacitor has moved out of its position and its connection on the other side is not attached. I will also fix this. Now, this is something to pay close attention to. If a PCB comes to you for repair, but someone else has already tried to fix it, always remember that they may have caused some fault or removed a component. It's your responsibility to check for that. Now, I will remove the IGBT from here. I'll add new soldering to make it easier to take out quickly. I'm gonna pull it out now. I've removed it and the IGBT number is GT30-J122. I have another IGBT, but before installing it, I'll check the diode here to ensure it's not short-circuited, as that would also cause issues. As you can see, it's showing a short circuit with a reading of 0.011. Now let's switch to continuity mode, and I'll check the capacitors to ensure there are no short circuits. They should be perfect. Now, 
let's switch to resistance mode. Here, we see a resistance of 10 kilo ohms, which means it should neither be open nor short-circuited, so it's completely fine. It's showing a resistance of 09.9 kilo ohms. However, we see 10 ohms here, indicating that the diode is showing a short circuit. The reason for this short circuit will be explained in the later part of this video. I'm going to test this IGBT again. There's a chance it might be okay. Let's check it once more. As you can see, it's showing zero, which means it's not working properly. Now, I'll remove the diode as well. I'm heating it up, and now I've taken it out of the system. I'll test this diode again to check if it's faulty or not. Here's the anode side and the cathode side. First, I'll check it in reverse polarity. As you can see, it's not showing any short circuit. Now, I'll change the polarity and place the positive probe on the anode and the negative probe on the cathode. It's showing a voltage drop of 0.586, which means this diode is in perfect working condition. The diode 902 in the system may show a short circuit inside, but normally it is fine. However, it's crucial to test it outside the system to confirm it's not faulty. When checking for short circuits, it's important to remember that this point could indicate a false short circuit, which can be misleading. That's why it's essential to always test the diode after removing it from the system. Otherwise, it could cause issues with the IGBT, leading to repeated short circuits. The IGBT may not discharge properly, which could cause it to short circuit again. Now, why does this diode show a fault or short circuit inside the system? The reason is the 10 ohm resistor, R901, connected in parallel with the diode. If it's in parallel, it will show a short circuit in the system, which is why the best practice is to always remove the diode from the circuit and test it separately. Now, I'll install the new IGBT. It's fitted into place, and I'll solder it. But before soldering, I'll make sure it's properly seated on the heatsink. If it's not positioned on the heatsink, the level may not be correct, leading to improper operation. I've now covered the IGBT and straightened its pins to ensure it properly fits into its place between the heatsink and PCB. After that, I soldered the IGBT and it's done. Similarly, I'll reinstall the diode. The diode is now back in place. I'll check in diode mode again to confirm everything is in proper position. You can see now that the voltage drop is visible at 0.535. This indicates that the voltage drop is in place, meaning our IGBT is functioning correctly. Checking the diode again shows it's also good, though it's important to always remove and test the diode individually to avoid any misleading results. Now, I'll address the capacitor that was out of position. I've straightened it, and now it's correctly aligned. After fixing it, I reconnected the multimeter probes to measure the voltage coming into the system. When we turned the main power on, the multimeter showed 228 volts in the system. The LEDs on the PCB also lit up, yellow, green, and two red lights, which means the PCB is powered on successfully. Now, the system is showing an error, which is expected. This is because, in these systems, until the indoor unit sends a signal to the outdoor unit, the switching won't occur, and an error will continue to show. That's why connecting the indoor unit is crucial for proper functioning. Now that I've connected the indoor unit, I'll turn the power back on. I've switched it on, and I can hear the switching sounds twice. This means the system has fully powered on, the lights have stabilized, and no errors are showing up so far. Next, I'll test the IPM by placing the probes on the positive and negative points. Since it's AC, I'll switch the multimeter to DC mode. We're getting a DC voltage reading of 337 volts, which means the IPM is working perfectly. I'll also check elsewhere, but the system has turned off because the compressor hasn't been connected yet. I'll turn the system off and connect the compressor. Now that I've connected the compressor and turned the system back on, the lights are still stable. The indoor motor is now working, and we will wait a bit to see if the compressor starts up. As you can see, the indoor unit is functioning, and now the system has switched and the compressor has started. You can see that everything is properly connected here, and the compressor started, but then shut off. Let's check why that happened. It might start again after a short delay. Now, some error is showing on the display. I think it will restart after a moment because two lights are blinking. I'll wait a bit to see if the error resolves on its own, which would be ideal, or if something shows on the display, we'll know what the issue is. As you can see, the system has reset and the compressor is starting up again. Now it's running. All the IGBTs are on and I can hear the compressor working properly. It seems that in the first startup, the system was performing some checks, 
and in the second startup, the compressor started properly. You can see that all the IGBTs are opening correctly and the LEDs are stable. So I've successfully repaired the PCB. As you saw, I identified the fault and explained how I fixed the PCB. Click on the left or right thumbnail to watch our next videos and subscribe. Thank you.